everyone, welcome to Onyx Pages. Uh, I'm in Jerry. Uh, for those of you who are recently subscribed to the channel, thanks very much for showing me some love and, uh, and joining the Onyx Pages circle. Uh, I am at WizCon 42. So WizCon is a feminist science fiction conference and it is uh, here in Madison, Wisconsin at the Madison Concourse Hotel. I'm obviously in a hotel room and I thought that I would take a minute to just um, tell you how it's been going. <sighs> um, I'm having a really good time. I'm having a really good time. Uh, I got here on Friday and it's now Sunday and the fact that I haven't had an opportunity to just sit down and film a short video should be testament to the fact that I'm having an amazing time. And I've, I'm just new to this world. I spend most of my time enjoying science fiction by reading it or by talking about it or speaking to a camera like this. And uh, this is one of the first times it seems, although I, I, I did experience this a little bit at the Black Speculative Arts Movement um, conference last year last year or two years ago this is the first time that I've literally been in a, a hotel jam-packed with folks um, in conversation about politics about comics about television shows about books about justice about whiteness um, and just it's it feels like home a little bit. So I'm having a really wonderful time. And I wanna tell you about a few things. So first I'll do a haul while I collect my thoughts because I feel like I'm kind of bursting a little bit. Uh, so I bought a few things that I'm excited about. So the first thing is um, a pair of earrings, which are sort of like a mashup of hip-hop culture and Harry Potter loving so I think you should be able to see them okay so the earrings read straight out of Hogwarts no lies straight out of Ravenclaw can you see that I don't know how people do this wait if I wait maybe if I put it there yes straight out of Ravenclaw so my Hogwarts house is Ravenclaw, and uh, now I have earrings to prove it. That is all. They're really light. They're made out of wood. Um, I hopefully will be able to wear them at some point at the conference. They might be a little long, so I might ask, yeah, they're, they're long, so I might ask the, the creator of these earrings to maybe cut the chain. But anyway, really cool. I think these were $10, uh, and they're, they're very light. You know how I love my earrings. Okay. So at the first, there's a lot of different things that happen at this conference. Most of the folks who I've met have gone to this conference once, twice, five, 11, 12 times already. And so there are lots of kind of traditions. So one of the traditions is that on the Friday night, there's the Carl Brandon Society party. And at that party, we made crowns um, and I made a crown. So this was my crown. I made it out of, um, like beads and flowers and stuff. And it goes on like this. And then it wraps to the back of my hair. Uh, and it's, it was really cool. So I, I wore it with my little white dress and loved it. So I have my crown and some folks like have their crowns from different conferences and just sort of keep them in a, a spot. So this was my little crown, so I did that. Uh, there's also a dealer's room where um, different artisans and independent bookstores uh, sell their stuff. So I picked up a few books. So this is my mini book haul. So the first one, um, there's this one bookstore that was selling a lot of Samuel, uh, Samuel Delaney. So this, oh, it's not really, there's the autofocus, there we are. So this is uh, the Ballad of Beta 2, um, and anthropology student Jonani was sent out on a quest he didn't want to find the meaning of the Ballad of Beta 2, for the Ballad was the only clue that even hinted at what 
had happened to the spaceship Beta 2's missing crew of galactic colonists. Jonani's search for the answer led him on a course of indescribable terror and to a miraculous understanding. So I've now read three of Samuel Delaney's stories. Um, uh, the last one that I read, which I buddy read with uh, Charles of Sir Booksage, and we're supposed to be filming a video, but sorry, Charles, I have fallen down on that. Um, there's, there are these uh, themes I'm finding in Delaney's work of like things being lost out in space and people having to go and figure out what's going on. Is this a mystery world? Is this um, a, a race of people who have disappeared? Is this a language that we don't understand? So it seems like the ballad of Beta 2 is going to take us into a very similar theme. This was $4 and it's, uh, I think this edition came out in what year do we have? Um, I think this might have been printed in 1965. Uh, the, the pages are yellow and it's, it's a legit pocketbook that you could keep in your pocket or purse or whatever. And the original price is 60 cents. So there's this bookstore selling all of this original Samuel Delaney stuff. So I got that. Um, and then I also got this... Um, this book as well. So these are one of those books that have two different stories. So on this side we have John Varley, Tango Charlie and Foxtrot Romeo, Stranded in Space. I care very little about that story. Can you can you see it if I do that? No. I really have to work on my autofocus. Uh, but what I really bought this book for was the Samuel Delaney's story, The Star Pit. Strafe t space travel is as easy as jumping on a ship, but only if you're golden. Um, I have absolutely no idea what this story is about, and I don't care. It's Samuel Delaney, and it looks like a print from, I don't know, 1966 by Galaxy Publishing Corp. So, yeah, pretty cool. So I got that. Then I picked up this title. It's Ancient Ancient Stories by Kini Ibura Salani. Salam, sorry. Uh, so Kini is the co-winner of the 2012 James Tiptree Jr. Award. So I think this was blurbed by Nalo Hopkinson and Cherie Renee Thomas. So you know I have all the love for Nalo Hopkinson and Cherie Renee Thomas uh, among other things so she's written short stories a novel poetry as well and she also co-edited or edited uh, Dark Matters 1 and 2 so they blurbed this so the back says Salam's collection of 10 reprints and three original story stories introduces readers to alternate worlds built around magic, sensuality, sexuality, and the search for emotional comfort, however tenuous. A lusty god temporarily bestows his sexual spark on a worn out and unappreciated young woman in desire. The world of moth-like aliens who feed on the heated nectar of human sexual energies is explored in three linked tales. A young man's grandfather sends him time traveling into danger as a punishment in Battle Royale, while Rosa Mojo is a straightforward revenge story about a young girl who uses magic to punish her rapist father. Unearthly magics frame Ferret, an intriguing snippet about a space colony ship guided by animal divination, and Marie, in which a pregnant Creole woman is willing to sacrifice anything to feel at home in New York City. Salam's unusual settings and lonely characters will call to readers who hunger for sex, identity, or just a place to belong. I did not read the back of this book before I bought it, and I am here for these stories. Um, one of the themes that certainly comes up in a lot of the writing that I've read is reclaiming sexuality and sexual autonomy um, for women. And I think this is one of the few 
the few stories that so explicitly sets that out as its aim. So um, I'm particularly interested in Afrofuturist stories that allow young women to reclaim their power and their autonomy and their sexuality after experiencing assault. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to reading the short stories uh, in this title. All right, so this one is The Stupendous Adventures of Mighty Marty Hayes by Laura L. Hyler. This is a middle grade uh, book. I do not read middle grade. I will uh, read this. I think that uh, Laura Hyler is actually at the conference because I believe she made a comment in one of the panels on Afrofuturism. So reading the back here, the seventh graders of Windsor Middle School are excited to start the new school year in their advanced science classroom. They'll work on, C on CRISPR CAS9, a new gene editing technology, a gene editing technology, exciting scientists all over the world. Marty shares a love of science and all things spy related with his best friend Christopher, who witnesses incidents Marty can't explain away. The two are soon testing Marty's superpowers. What about their classmate Aisha? Does she have a superpower? A stealth high-tech drone piloted by international goons constantly monitors the kids. They awaken, they awaken the annoying school bully, Wade, to his own superpowers and convince him to steal valuable CRISPR CS, CAS9 data. So Marty, Christopher, and Aisha band together to stop the theft at their beloved International Spy Museum in Washington, D.C. Who will win, international goons or the superhero team of Advanced Science 303? So if you see the, the cover, can you, uh, I really need to get better at this. Maybe I should move out of the frame. Anyway, so this cover is also, also great. There's a scientific genius black boy uh, in the center and uh, kids all around. So I'm looking forward to this. And I, I really want um, more Afrofuturist um, middle grade and uh, YA and children's literature. So if you know of any really cool Afrofuturist uh, children's literature, please let me know. I know that Zeta Elliott has done some really good stuff. All right, and then the last one, um, this is called The Heaviness of Knowing by Sherilyn G. Brown. So I got this one at a table. Uh, it's a feminist publishing house. I will get this wrong. Um, and the writers of the books get, I think, 85% of the profit, which I think is really high. I've been thinking a lot about um, profit and the business of writing and independent writing and I started thinking about independent writing as a result um, of Denise uh, and her encouragement of booktubers to really look out for indie writing and to support indie writing. So the back, so thanks Denise, you're awesome. Uh, so the back here says, knowing the truth isn't always a good thing whether you're human or alien, ain't that the truth. Ro Roxelle's life revolves around one core principle, obey your gods or die. So even though she knows her gods are false, Roxelle pretends to be a devoted follower. She ignores that her obedience means helping them invade another planet and uses her dream travel ability to force a woman on earth to unknowingly do as they demand. But when her gods begin hunting and ex executing non-believers, Roxelle fears her disloyalty will be discovered. Lauren's a serial overachiever. When a sudden illness stops her in her tracks, she'll try anything to get back to work, even agree to see a hypnotherapist. During her hypnosis sessions, Lauren meets Roxelle and discovers that not only are aliens real, but they're planning to conquer Earth, and she's been helping them. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Now Lauren must stop this alien invasion that threatens life as she knows it, and Roxelle must find a new way to survive now that pretending won't keep her safe. What will be the ultimate price these two women have to pay for knowing the truth? Uh, so I didn't know anything about uh, Sherilyn G. Brown. She's a black woman. I believe she's based out of Texas. 
and this is book one of the Conscious Dreamer series. And the cool thing about this is in, in, in addition to it being uh, science fiction, maybe fantasy, but definitely science fiction written by a black woman with black um, a black protagonist. And I think if you look really closely, you can see that the protagonist has locks. Um, I think there might be a queer romance in this. I'm hoping we'll see. Uh, but I just, um, I like the fact that this also has a relationship to dreamers. I think there's a, sort of a, a subplot that involves lucid dreaming, which is, uh, is something really cool and something I like to do when I sleep long enough to be able to accomplish that. Okay, so um, that's my haul. I think I will stop here because if I start talking about the amazing panels that I've gone to, I will have a 30 minute long video and I, I'm not going to do that. But I will tell you just really briefly, there was an amazing panel on Black Lightning. Uh, with just brilliant geniuses. There's an amazing panel on Get Out. And horror and black folks. Um, a great... Um, a great panel that I just went to about the relationship between black women and white women and feminism in these particular times. Uh, and the ways that white women ought to support black women um, and to support their work, to support their employment and safety um, in these political times, which was amazing. Um, there was a really good uh, speaker talking about Afrofuturism young adult writing and some of the tropes, the flying African trope, which uh, still has me in reflection. And there I had the opportunity to listen to Tanana Reeve do read a short story. I met Andrea Hairston, uh, Kay Tempest Bradford, a lot of ind like indie writers and emerging writers uh, as well. So I'm just kind of like drunk, <laughs> just drunk. Um, and I'm really, I'm happy to be here. So I will, t and I've got flowers in my hair because, you know, room service hooked me up. Uh, so anyway, there will be more videos. Oh my God. And then there was a dance last night. It is, um, I think it was called Justice Requires That We Dance or Justice Demands That We Dance. And it's a, a people of color um, only, like the artists that were played were only people of color and it was a mixed group and we just danced and it felt free. There may or may not have been an amazing twerking battle which gave me a lot of life. I stood on the sidelines and just appreciated it um, and it was just nice just just to see people dancing and yelling and giggling and moving to music in a free liberating way so yes I'm really happy to have met some really great people here and I have a whole day and a half to continue so yes WizCon and Musical Tati, hopefully when I um, interview Tanana Reeve Du, if, I, if that happens, which I really hope that it does, maybe I can, you know, tell her to give you a shout out. Not tell her, because you can't tell her to do anything, but maybe ask her or let her know that you've been reading all of her books and that you have videos on them, that you love them. Um, so anyway, that is all. Have a really great uh, weekend. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are at WizCon, come say hi to me. I'm wearing brightly colored things and I have flowers in my hair. Uh, and if you're not at WizCon, I'm judging you. You should come next year. It's an awesome place to be. Okay, bye for now. <laughs>